What are some of the things that you think get in the way of people taking great images? Obviously, we've got some planning and patience. Um, but I've, I've got a, a Canon 50D, which isn't the best camera in the world, but it's not the worst camera in the world either. That was, yeah, that was actually my first uh, camera purchase in college was the Canon 50D. Yeah, I mean, it's an incredible, incredible camera for an average Joe like me who doesn't have any real idea what he's doing. Um, but what has struck me with it is that everybody I talk to really complicates all the settings. And geez, and I was, I've, I've always had this emotional turmoil of having it on like the green uh, square of automatic and just going for it to this inner guilt that maybe I should be fiddling with the white balance or manual or something like that. Like, how do we move from the green auto setting through to fiddling with the rest? You know, oftentimes you don't need to leave the, the green auto setting, but I do say that having, I, I don't know that I've ever used it once on my current camera, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but the green auto setting is just a great setting that will capture all of the data. I think the most important thing and something important to remember, how can I phrase this well? You see, when you shoot on film, you take your negatives and you you take them into the into the dark room and you develop your image. And a lot of people don't know this, but Ansel Adams was a master at developing his images and the chemical process. And you could even argue that he was the father of Photoshop. Mm. Now, cameras like the the Canon 50D or my Olympus EM1 Mark II, uh, they capture in a in a mode called RAW. And that captures a lot of data, but you can then take that data, that negative, and you can take it into Adobe Lightroom or the digital darkroom, and then you can edit it to make it look as realistic or as, as fantasy-like as you like. And uh, I always strive for realism in my images. Mm. And so if I can get that good exposure that I'm looking for, and if I've captured it in that raw format, and if I have that knowledge of how to develop the image properly, then I can expect a good, to uh, get a good image out of it. But it takes a lot of practice. There's no one-click filter. There's no um, one-click auto-enhance feature for this kind of work. It just requires a lot of uh, time and learning and, and practice. And uh, it's something you can do yourself. YouTube is an amazing resource, but with time i think that's that's what matters the most so it sounds to me a little bit like what you're saying is you can you can get a three quarters good enough image and then use the the digital uh, what did you call it digital darkroom uh, of, mm -hmm. of photoshop or whatever it might be to go and then bring that image to what you want to because the camera's already captured as many of the components as as could ever be possible. Yes. The camera's one purpose is to capture data. Mm. And if you have a good knowledge of how to capture that data properly, then you can take the image the rest of the way, the, the other 25% in the digital darkroom. Um, so let, let's, let's keep going down that rabbit hole because you've used the word properly. Sure. You've used the word properly twice. And then uh, I was like, Oh my God, there's a proper way of doing it. Like, come on, let's, let's, <laughs> let's unpack properly. <laughs> well, sometimes the auto feature will do it properly. And sometimes it gets you good enough. Um, I mean, the auto feature will make sure that the, will do its best to make sure that the blacks aren't too dark or that the lights aren't too dark. Mm. We've all seen those pictures of a bright foreground, but the sky is completely white or a beautiful sunset, but the ground is completely black. Uh, you know, scenarios like that are times when you need to know how to use the settings on your camera before you can take a really good image. Um, before all of this, though, a good composition, I think, I mean, even if you don't shoot in RAW, even if you shoot with the automatic camera setting, if you don't know how to compose a good image in the first place, then your images aren't going to turn out to be what you had hoped for. Um, cameras are great for capturing quick memories. 
But when you compose, uh, when you carefully compose an image with patience, then uh, when you actually capture that data, be it auto or or just shooting JPEG or not, it will turn out to be a good image. Um, and by compose, you're you're meaning the right. Uh a balance of the maybe the sky the foreground and the background that looks good to your mm-hmm. eye is that right yeah you you might put some you might put some rocks in the foreground and uh, trees in the middle and then tall mountains in the top and it'll be good but then you look over you look to your left and you see there's a river winding through and you think oh if i take a few steps over this way then i can get that river and it leads straight into the scene or you might see some wildflowers and you think, oh, I can put this wildflower right in the front of the foreground and I'll have the river behind it and then I'll have the mountains in the top. And then if I wait just 30 minutes, if I just sit still with this perfect composure, with this perfect composition for 30 more minutes, the sun will come up behind me and it will light up the mountains um, out in the beyond. And, and, and that's what I mean by composing an image is is slowing down, taking in the environment and thinking about the scene. What what makes this place so special? And if you can arrange those elements carefully, then no matter what your camera settings are, as long as they're close, then you'll get a, a very special image. Cool.